Okay, listen, fo concentrate, guys. Um, I got an email a little while ago from like a tanky challenging my anti-tanky positions, you know? And I, I responded and I, you know, I responded and I, I criticized their takes quite a bit. And I, I usually don't talk that much over email, um, but I was, I'm, I just fucking hate, I just fucking, fucking hate tankies, dude. And I got a response and the response was really fucking interesting to me. Uh, and I asked if I could read it out loud on stream because I thought it was interesting and I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, and they, they, they said yes, and they added a little addendum at the end. It's, it's definitely a little dramatic, you know, um, uh, uh, but, but I, I was, I was interested in the content of the email and I wanted to go over it, you know, so if I may, to be honest, in the week and a half since I first wrote that original email, I have lost all interest in defending tankies from your or anyone else's condemnation. As we were scrambling to release our first internal circular on New Year's, Eve's, New Year's Eve, I pointed out that one of our articles ignored the distinction between Republicans and Democrats. One thing led to the other, and what followed was over 12 hours of my repeated attempts to demonstrate why Democrats lead to better outcomes than Republicans in a sea of non-arguments ranging from irrelevant to outright disingenuous. At one point, one of the others who actually seemed to agree with me criticized my appeals to the welfare of American people, posting the Karl Leibniz, yep, I don't know, what that is, the, know who that is either, quote, pity for poverty, enthusiasm for equality and freedom, recognition of social injustice, and a desire to remove it, is not socialism. While true, the implication was that we should not really concern ourselves with what's best for the people at all. It was totally unfathomable to me how anyone, especially people who have found to be reasonable on other issues, could be so dismissive of my inarguable points. Able to in unable to engage with them directly, even once in what is probably the longest debate I've ever had. But then I remember that not too long ago, I was on the other side of the same debate, shocking my social democrat friend by telling her I had no intention to vote when I turned 18. When she asked me why, I regurgitated the same, both sides are bad, therefore who cares, argument my fellow tankies gave me, but she pointed out that the Republicans in Washington state are trying to require parental approval if their underage daughters want an abortion, reminding me that it's just our lives. Yes, I too may have been anti-voting, but when I was faced with a good rebuttal, I changed my mind, but they maintained it. Sitting there, typing away in a private Discord channel, in a private server, in an organization that most people will never know or care about, I realize that these people, even the ones who weren't opposed to voting, aren't socialists because they wanted to maximize the well-being of all people. They're socialists because Marx was right, and Marx was right because he's a socialist. And however well-meaning these people are doesn't change the fact that this organization, an organization I co-founded two and a half years ago, has done less than nothing for the left. If anything, it's done active harm. Yesterday, one of our members was bragging about going on a pro-Bernie server and spamming messages calling him a social fascist. I can't even begin to describe the myopia that must have led to that. I want to thank you for allowing me to jerk me off a little. Uh, I want to thank you for allowing me to see the blatant destruction that these people do to the left, a destruction that I have up until this point perpetuated because I thought we and only we were in the right. I was just 13 when I began calling myself a Marxist-Leninist, and I didn't do it because I'd done some thorough analysis of political theory and practice. I did it because I watched a few Finbull videos that told me Stalin and the USSR were good, and I believed them without listening to the other side. And maybe those videos were right, but I can no longer be so arrogant as to dismiss the consensus of mountains of academic and historical research without having a damn good understanding of it myself. I have to face the fact that I've become emotionally attached to my positions, unironically pushing feels over reels. Even if Marxism-Leninism turned out to have a better record than non-ML leftism, that doesn't mean one is right and the other is wrong. One of the reasons I was so quick to disregard the mainstream historical critique of these socialists is because I thought their proponents were just a bunch of bourgeois academics or useful idiots, but seeing an intelligent socialist make similar arguments causes me to have second thoughts. 
And if Marxism-Leninism really does have as horrible a track record as many say it does, then it might have to consider other forms of leftism. When you first rebuked tankies as being more interested in the aesthetics of socialism than actually helping people out, I thought it was just meaningless ad hominem drivel. I knew I was interested in helping people out, so it had to be. But seeing the farce of that voting debate firsthand, as well as recognizing how little we've done for the left, has shown me that you were right. Frankly, I think what really attracted me to Marxism-Leninism at first was the notion of some idyllic socialist past that we needed to recreate, a sentiment that I'm sure is shared by many on the alt-right, albeit for different societies. But acknowledging my lack of knowledge on 20th, 20th century socialism and political theory generally, I know that I can no longer so boldly call myself a Marxist-Leninist without really knowing what that means or what other forms of leftism entail. I know enough to be a socialist, and at this point, that's all I really need. Deciding how in particular we should structure our government and economy after we win the Civil War, after we set up a revolutionary uprising, after we win over enough people to make that possible, is by far one of the least productive things I could be doing right now. And it's likely more than a coincidence that I joined the tanky community around the same time I joined the YouTube subliminal sphere, an occult collection of channels that claim their videos, if listened to long enough, can change one's physical attributes. I was deluded by their promise of allowing me to transition completely as I was too afraid to face my family and my society. Now I realize that waiting has only been to my detriment, and, but I am glad I gradually admitted the obvious absurdity of this delusion to myself over the last few months, for which I have to thank ContraPoints for showing me that being trans isn't the worst thing ever, and... Um, Thank and you for restoring my respect for science and academia. So, in short, I disavow all of this nonsense and thank you for helping me see through the dogma. But I'll still remain in my organization and try to make it better. Maybe we can, uh, maybe we might be able to let back in all the Trotskyists and anarchists we purged almost two years ago. I don't want a group I created to continue hurting the left, but I am consoled by the fact that whatever effect we're having, I doubt it will be large enough to be relevant. I'll cut this short because this is almost getting as long as my first email. Thank you for everything you do and congrats on 50k. Good luck in the next decade. So that was the original email that she had sent to me. And then I asked her if she would be okay with me reading it on stream because, and maybe this isn't your personal thing, and there's no doubt, you know, some jerking off here, and I love being jerked off, but um, there is content here that is relevant to what I have discussed in the past, and I like getting a human insight into um, this, I guess, um, this this misattribution of leftist values. Um, what's incredible to me is that the time period between the first email and the one where they avowed everything else, where they disavow everything else, um, the, the difference between the two um, was like a week. So you know, day one, they're messaging me, you know, telling me that I'm wrong in my characterization of tankies. And day eight, they're completely disavowing all of this. Um, anyway, this is, um, this, I think it's fairly, this is far better written than most of the emails that I get, you know, it's, it's pretty darn good looking actually, but there is an addendum um, there's an addendum uh, uh, to this uh, to this script that she asked be I assume she I, I guess context the name on the email is Victoria so I think that's a fairly reasonable guess but I'll go with they anyway just to be sure um, there is a, 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 a you know a postscript that she's asked um, I read so I'll um, so I'll go over that now PS. If anyone from my organization hears this message, I have little doubt of what is to come. You might strip me of my roles, exclude me from the group, and tarnish my memory. And I would take all of it gracefully, for if the tables were turned, I would have done the same just a few months ago. But before you unleash your vitriol and call me every name in the book, consider this. There is a reason I did not reveal the name of our organization or those of any of our members. It's because I don't want to throw away everything we've built. I want to make it better. 
If you think the path we are on today is the path to socialism and victory, I want you to stop and ask yourself exactly what we have achieved over the last two years. What have we done to advance discourse, to move people left, and to put our theory into practice? And if you believe in Marxism-Leninism or Maoism and think Stalin and Mao were innocent, are you able to substantiate your beliefs in the face of their detractors, or have you not read one word of what those detractors have to say? I certainly haven't, and that's why I cannot genuinely call myself a Marxist-Leninist, and I doubt most of you can either. And who knows, maybe you're right. Maybe the Vanguard Party is the way and the Nazis did the Caitlin Massacre. The Kittian Massacre. None of that changes the... I don't know what that is. None of that changes the harm we are doing to the left by ignoring the blatant reality that most people, if, we ex if exposed to our positions, would view us just as we view the Nazis. If you want to change that, you need to engage with the issues of today, the issues that matter to ordinary, working people. And you need to engage with your opponents on, uh, uh, on the right, but also on the left. Perhaps you might learn something. It would be dogmatic to think otherwise. On the other hand, you could keep sailing down this river, publish your articles, hold your meetings, run the committees with minimal participation outside the staff themselves. Despite everything I've said here, I do not hate you, for I know you mean well. No, actually, I pity you, for you are convinced that your path is right, that you will be the vanguard of the next revolution in the West when your largest Western advocate is Jason Unruh. I pity you, for you never realize that the divide in America is not between socialists and capitalists, but between social democrats and fascists. Move it left, or your... That's, that's very true, by the way. Move it left, or your river shall not lead to paradise, but the jagged cliffs of a fascist rebellion. And that's the conclusion of the postscript. And I don't want to editorialize too much because I, um, because the, yeah, no, Comrade Mooney, this does sound like letter to cult member from X member of that cult. It really does. Um, anyway, it was well written. I liked it. Uh, a tremendous, tremendous respect to, um, to, to, to the, the person who wrote this out. I really do appreciate it. Um, and I, I just want to say, um, I just want to say that um, this is this wasn't done to like impugn or like uh, self adulate or anything like that. The reason I liked this is because um, so often political advocacy is driven by um, personal, uh, unresolved internal disputes. Why are so many people neo Nazis? Well, it stems from hurt. And entitlement and 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 anger, you know. Why are so many people liberals? Well, uh, because it stems from uh, from from you know a fear, a complacency, an unwillingness. There's usually an emotional root to people's political views. Nobody truly is you know a bastion of facts and logic, including myself. There are reasons, legitimate reasons, emotionally, why I believe the things that I believe, and I'm compromised, and those biases affect my perspective, and. It is as important when engaging in political advocacy to examine the psyche of those who disagree with you as it sometimes is to engage with their actual policy positions, which is why we spend so much more time discussing the psyche of Nazism than we do their actual political positions. Because their political positions are fucking irrelevant. They'll lie, they'll change their minds in a dime. It doesn't fucking matter. The only thing that matters for them is the hurt and entitlement that uh, that they feel that leads them towards their genocidal practices. Again, we're not talking about Nazis here. We're talking about tankies, which are, you know, very, very different. Whatever the case may be, thank you to, to, to the, you know, the deliverer of this email. Uh, you'll probably see the videos that comes out. Um, and yeah, I'm very, I'm, I'm personally heartened by the changes that you have made. Obviously I am biased. I hope things work out with the organization you were in and with its members. I hope that uh, there was no tremendous falling out. And I hope that you were able to continue to live your life authentically from this point forward. There we go. I'm glad I can.